welcome to Season 2, Episode 5 of My Lathe Project. This is a short video about how to set up a reversing switch for your lathe. You may recall that when I was wanting to turn a thread, I did not want to disengage the lead screw because it is 8 threads per inch and I was cutting in metric, so the usual methods of uh, re-engaging the lead screw did not work. So instead I had to turn the chuck backwards and that's why I want a reversing switch on my lathe. The reason that the re reversing switch has been disabled is that this is a X high school lathe and the chuck is screwed on. If you suddenly throw it into reverse it can cause the chuck to unscrew and fly across the room and they do not want kids doing this so they disabled the reversing option. Whether, you, whether or not you can set up reversing depends on the type of motor you have. My motor is a uh, condenser or capacitor start motor. It's an induction AC motor with a extra piece on the top, usually looking something like this. And this is where the capacitor or condenser is housed. And I'll talk a little later about exactly how this reversing mechanism works just for those who are interested, but you don't really need to know exactly. I'm going to rewire the whole thing, the three pin plug needs replacing, and as you can see the insulation is coming off the wires. And before we start talking about the reversing switch, we should uh, talk about the fact that the power supply to the motor is separate from the reversing mechanism. And uh, if we look at the switch here inside the orange case, you can see it looks like a two-tiered wedding cake. The top tier is actually the switch that turns the motor on and off, so that when you put it in either forward or reverse, the motor switches on, and the layer below that determines whether it's going to go clockwise or anti-clockwise, so they are two separate switches. Actually, the original wiring here had the two linked together with these two black jumper cables, but these will have to be removed. So entering this orange box are the three wires from the three-pin plug, which connect to the upper layer, and there are also two wires that go down to the main windings on the motor and they are separate from these reversing windings I'll be talking about in a minute. Also we need to think about safety from the point of view of these wires getting damaged by pieces of metal flying off the chuck. So in this image you can see I've fixed a vertical pipe for the wires to run through and actually there's a piece of plastic hose inside that uh, pipe to make sure that the cables don't get chafed. So now we can move on to the reversing mechanism and this is where we take a plate off the side of the motor. You may find inside that there are instructions for reversing the motor and wiring diagrams. Inside that same chamber you'll find there are two screws and two wires going to those screws and if you reverse those two wires the motor will run in the opposite direction. Try that out and check that it works and if it does you can then fit the reversing switch. The reversing switch is a double pole double throw switch which means there's two switches which are linked together um, to operate in the way shown in this diagram where the plus and minus um, inputs can go to the two outputs where in one position the positive feed on the left hand side goes to the upper connector on the right hand side and when you turn the switch the opposite direction it goes to the lower connector on the right side instead of the upper so this reverses its direction. So to implement this change all we needed to do was extend these connections up to the switch box. So I have two cables, each one with two cores. Uh, one pair is used to connect to the red and black wires coming from the motor, from the starter windings actually, and the other cable is connected to the two screws. And these two two-core cables are run up to the switch. Of course there's also another three-core cable that goes from the motor up to the switch that includes the ground, the grounds are just all connected together, but the line and neutral connections for the motor have to be connected through the upper layer of the switch through to the line and neutral wires coming from the three pin plug. This means that there are actually seven wires going from the motor up to the switch plus the extra three coming from the three pin plug making a total of ten connections. Although that's all you really need to know uh, to set up the reversing, you may be interested in the design of these motors uh, to understand how reversing actually works. The upper and lower wires in this diagram are actually connected directly to the AC power supply and provide the main power for the motor. They induce a magnetic field in the armature, which is the rotating part. Of course, the 
north on the rotating armature is attracted to a south magnetic field created by the coils. However, to get this thing to start spinning, it needs the starter coils, which are shown here on the left and right sides. The one on the right is shown with its condenser or capacitor in series with a switch, which is in series with the coil itself. This coil, by the way, is a thinner wire which has a higher resistance. So on a 240 volt motor, this coil would have a resistance of about 16 ohms and the main power coil would have a resistance of about 6 ohms, roughly 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 ratio between the two. Uh, the ohm ratings are lower for a 110 volt motor, of course. The starter switch in this circuit is actually a centrifugal switch which is normally closed when the motor is stationary and allows current to go through. But once the motor has started, the centrifugal switch opens and these starter coils are not used at all once the motor is running. You can usually hear an audible click when this switch turns off. So, how does it work? The capacitor acts like a little battery and each time you go through an AC cycle, it charges and discharges. And this process causes a delay, resulting in about a 90 degree phase shift in the current going through the main coil versus the starter coil. So the starter coil basically activates after the main coil and starts attracting the north-south pole in the armature towards itself, causing the armature to rotate in a clockwise direction. But if you reverse the current through those coils, it would go in the opposite direction. So by placing the double pole, double throw switch we talked about in the circuit where the black box is in the diagram, you can make it change direction and just besides black box I've actually drawn the uh, illustration of the uh, two pole switch. Now I would like to acknowledge and recommend a very good website about all kinds of motors used on woodworkers lathes and other equipment by Matthias Wandel and the website is woodgears.ca w-o-o-d-g-e-a-r-s dot c-a slash motors slash reverse dot html I'd recommend reading this if you want to know more about other types of motors.